What's up, you guys? We're going to take a little bit of a ride this morning. It's pretty cold out, but we're going to go check out the um, Lucas Oil Stadium because they're prepping the track here for Supercross. That's tomorrow. You know what? It's cold, man. I feel like someone's got to go say hi to these motocross folks and let them know that, hey, Indiana's not always frigid cold all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, just going to ride through the city here for a little bit. Uh, nothing too crazy. Got the warm 100% gloves on, nice and thick. Keep my hands nice and warm. Yo, if anybody knows how to get your boots to be a little quieter, let me know, cause man, these things are squeaky. Hop on uh, young Kayla here, Kayla the KLX. Oh, she still wants to be choked. Oh, the joys of having a carbureted bike. One of these days I'll get a fuel injected bike. Won't have to worry about having it choked. And yes, I know it's not exactly proper to ride it with the choke on, but uh, what are you going to do? Just heating her up. Yeah, it is definitely chilly out here. It's just clear. Uh, she's still cold. Come on, young Kayla. There we go. Give her a little bit of a bath here. There we go. That's not too cold, actually. Not unbearable. I kind of feel bad for all the uh, the motocross and supercross folks who are here today because Indiana a week ago it was like 60, almost 70 degrees. It was super nice. But then they're coming through and have supercross here, and it's freaking frigid, man. And it's also pothole season, so if any of them rent cars and drive around, they're probably like, why would anyone ever try to drive in this city like this? It's just gaping holes in the earth all around. It feels good to at least get out. I've been working super hard on a few projects in the studio, so it feels good to finally go out and rip around for a little bit. Hope you guys are having a good one. Let me know down in the comments if you guys are riding in the winter or if you keep your bikes locked up. I've been having a fun time riding in the cold with my friend Mac all the time. It's been really hilarious just trying to lurk around and uh, all the snow and all the ice. I posted a video just a section back of uh, trying to drift my, my dual sport in some snow, which was pretty hard actually. It's a I mean, as you would imagine, the, the traction on your tires is next to nothing, but man, it was it was fun. It, it teaches you some, some good uh, balance and uh, some good throttle control trying to, trying to keep the bike upright when it's trying to slide around. If anything, it's good practice for when you're on mud. Yeah, I love these Power Mad mirrors, dude. It's so tight that when you go off-road, you can just fold them down. When you're on-road, you can fold them out. Super duper handy, man. I'm glad to finally be at the tail end of modding this bike in terms of aesthetics and comfort. I've done a lot of things here on this thing. If, if you're curious what all mods I've done to this KLX uh, 250S, I think it's a 2014. If you're curious, some of the mods that I've done, I have a video down below on all the different stuff I've done to this bad boy. No performance mods really all that much, uh, if any at all, so really just uh, a lot of aesthetic mods, put a new graphics kit, New levers, um, bark busters, mirrors, a few things kind of like that. New foot pegs down below. But I, it really did transform the bike from stock, I feel like. Um, especially, especially the foot pegs, dude. These things are, I don't know if you could see them on the camera, but they're pretty, pretty big, pretty wide, and really grippy on my boots, which is awesome. It's definitely helped off-road when things get a little bit squirrely and you have more, you know, 
more foot pad room to rest your feet on and balance. The foot pegs were really tricky to go on though. I, I, I saw videos of people who had them on there and they had no issues with them, but I really struggled getting them on. I'm kind of mechanically inclined, I guess, or not mechanically inclined, I guess you could say. So definitely a learning curve for me, but working on this thing taught me all kinds of different things mechanically and ended up picking up a few tools to be able to work on this bad boy. So if you are somebody who's, you know, not really not really used to working on engines or things of that nature, modding a bike like with levers and doing a few, you know, a few adjustments like putting this this new pro taper bar and stuff on there teaches you some really good basics of working on vehicles. Not so much, you know, carburetors and inverters and stuff like that on cars, but um, but it'll at least teach you how to wrench around and do a few things somewhat in that vein so that when you do work on other stuff, you're not completely lost on, you know, step one. That, that was the biggest thing for me when I would try to work on anything. I wouldn't even know where the hell to start or what the hell I'm even working on, so definitely was beneficial to me and learning from my buddy Mac who I mean dude he works on airplanes professionally and he definitely knows what he's doing so it's good to have people like that around if, if you do have a buddy who's mechanically inclined and they like working on stuff and if you're curious dude don't be afraid to hit him up just be like yo I'd love to come watch you work on a car or something someday and just learn a couple things here and there I mean just watching off and on you you pick up a lot of stuff even if you're not the one directly working on it biggest thing is just trying to learn how all the different elements are connected and uh, you know there's a lot of moving parts inside engines and you know if you're trying to learn stuff like that dude a dirt bike or a dual sport with kind of low maintenance intervals is a great way to dip your toes into some of that stuff so I highly suggest it's a good thing about dual sports is the uh, maintenance intervals are super duper low I mean shoot I basically put gas in this thing check my chain freaking let it rip dude oil change every now and again nothing too crazy as far as riding in winter goes too um, it's one of those things like once you're out moving around and once you're riding around it's actually not that cold I mean when you're sitting still you're at a stoplight it's frigid of course but when you're moving around you get the blood flowing it's a lot easier you don't really feel it as much when you're paying attention to other things like you know trying to be safe and out here riding, staying alive. You know what I mean? I've been loving this KLX 250 as well. I mean, I haven't really ridden any other bikes other than uh, my buddy's DR and a lot of mountain bikes and uh, road bikes. But as far as engine powered machines, this thing has been great little training wheels for a kind of an idiot novice rider like myself. I've been really enjoying ripping this thing around. I feel pretty safe on it already for the most part. I don't feel like it has so much power it's going to fucking kill me. That's good. It's also a blast just riding a slow bike, just letting the throttle go all the way to fully open. And it, it you know, it's not really going to push that much miles per hour or that much speed. But it's fun, man. I, I The idea of riding a super powerful bike kind of terrifies terrifies me because you twist the throttle a little too much there's dire consequences whereas on something this small well the engine this small and kind of insignificant this is not gonna I mean it'll it'll put you on your ass if you're not really balancing very well or paying attention but if you're just if you're just chilling riding around you're not trying to pop wheelies or do anything crazy this is a pretty safe bike that guy in that Grand Cherokee right there was listening to Honky Tonk by Donkey Donk <laughs> Tremendous. Such a puny sounding bike. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good though. It's in good fun, you know? I imagine at Lucas Oil Stadium now, the uh, motocross folks are going to be doing press day. I think they always ride press days on Friday. They're probably in there right now, prepping up, getting ready to rip around. I'd love to see some of the riders out here talk to somebody, but I might have to wait for Fan Fest to be able to do that shit. Man, it's gonna be fun. This is my first Supercross since I was a little, little kid, man. I went when I was a little kid, 
sat in the freaking nosebleeds. It was an absolute blast, man. Now that I'm back into riding around in motorcycles and stuff, I've been very keen to try it out and give it a go. I think it's going to be a freaking blast, man. Didn't see anybody out. You know, I have always been curious what is back here in this area. Guess let's find out. A little grass patch with a little hill. That's tight. Urban single track. Hell yeah. <laughs> that was tight. That was super fun. That was super fun. I might have to go do that again, actually. That was a blast. Let's do it again. See how I can jump up this curb here. Not that well. Tight. better those drift turns dude. Gotta lean hella forward. Give it the bean skis. Man, what a blast. That shit is super fun. Terrible, terrible. <laughs> uh, it's just tough, dude. You know what? I'm going this way. Sick. Let's go into the Brit the billboard. Why not? Well, there's a bunch of rocks there, that's why you would not, but you know, hey, it's all good. My man. Oh shit. <laughs> I knew it. I fucking knew it. I crank my fucking back again, I bet. I keep falling to my left all the time, man. All the fucking time, man. Constantly. Constantly, constantly, constantly. Yep, hurt my fucking back. Shit fucking hurts bad. Yep, that shit fucking hurts. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Play stupid shit, win stupid prizes. Isn't that the... Play stupid games when stupid prizes, is that the phrase? Holy shit. Try to roll into it, but you can't quite roll into all the ones you want. Man, that shit hurt. 
I like how the dual sport is just perfectly fine. He's like, yo, what happened? 